we are at a point where the perceived OT cyber risk actually exceeds the data determined real risk. Well, what was that? In his opening keynote at the S4 conference this year, Dale Peterson lectures 1,100 people of the OT security community that the OT cyber risk may be over-exaggerated. Uh, certainly, I didn't expect this coming out of Dale's mouth. And um, so, in a way, for me, it was like a shocker because if you know Dale, he's, he's usually a little bit reserved and doesn't take a, a clear position. Let's just say he is just a, a, a more moderate person. Um, but he goes all the way. He even doubles down. He rubs it in the audience's face uh, by pointing to um, a couple of well-known cyber incidents like this one. In November of last year, we had the now infamous Iranian-affiliated hacker group, the Cyber Avengers, attack Aliquippa Water in Pennsylvania, a small municipal water utility with 6,615 customers. They did manage to take out some OT cyber assets, but not water delivery. Those 6,000 households were not without clean, safe, drinkable water, not even for a minute the cyber attack on Aliquippa, the disputed attack on Oldsmar, and as far as I know, every other attack on the U.S. water sector in recent years has had zero customer impact. And it gets better and better. So you know what the usual argument is when um, somebody points to an, um, a thwarted cyber attack against the critical infrastructure, it usually goes like, yeah, but imagine what would have happened or what could happen when you are without water, suggesting that people will die and uh, will develop all kinds of diseases. So the sky is falling. And uh, obviously this is nonsense because we have to deal with um, disruptions in water supply, supply of electricity, etc., depending on which part of the world you live in. For example, in the United States, so I live in Florida, where uh, in the summertime, in hurricane season, electrical outages are a thing, a regular occurrence, and Dale shares his own personal story. Listen to him. Last August, an upcountry Maui wildfire, where I live, not the horrific one in Lahaina, but one of the three other wildfires on the island that terrible day, the upcountry Maui wildfire melted some of the water infrastructure, potentially releasing benzene and other dangerous chemicals into the water supply. About 7,000 residents in Kula, including my family, were without safe water for over three weeks. In case you think this was a once in a hundred year event, about two years earlier, a large rainstorm took out some of the above ground water infrastructure and we had no water for four days, uh, no drinkable water for over 60 days. And our man data goes all the way and also tells you once more what I've told you over and over again, that we just don't have a and any reasonable number of cyber physical attacks on the record. And, and before you say, no, Ralph, you're wrong. No, we have hundreds. No, that's not true. I'm talking about cyber physical attacks on the record for which we have forensic evidence. That's a big difference, right? Not, not just allegations, not just rumors, but something with actual fact to back it up. Let's listen to Dale. The things we highlight um, even, I might even say celebrate, these OT cyber incidents. Uh, they become the top news story. They get put in every press release, every webinar, every presentation. I still see, in 2024, I still see mentions of the Iranian attack on the Bowman Avenue Dam. Back in 2013, a tiny, rarely used sluice gate. The U.S. Security and Exchange Commission, the SEC, the U.S. department that regulates public companies, in December, the SEC issued a requirement that public companies report cyber incidents that would have a material impact on the company, an impact that could affect stock price. We're three months into this reporting requirement right now. 
and there haven't been any reported incidents that have affected OT and operations. So those were some shocking truth bombs, right? I mean, uh, if you follow my work, uh, certainly it, it won't be a surprise for you. Um, it, it was a surprise for me that Dale ex actually goes down that road. But um, you know how the rest of the industry responds to those facts. What Dale has pointed out are facts. Um, and you know what the reaction is, but imagine if, if this and that would happen. And I'm, I'm very glad that Dale also countered that um, cheap argument by pointing out, well, even if there are uh, disruptions in critical infrastructure, etc., people don't die. Uh, even a funny thing from, from the uh, manufacturing sector, where usually somebody points out, but that, that is going to result in downtime as if downtime would uh, directly lead the, com uh, the company to bankruptcy. So, uh, guys, you have no idea how often manufacturing operations face downtime for whatever reason, right? So, for example, like a material shortage or some mechanical problem. So it is not that the sky would fall immediately when there would be a disruption. <clears throat> and... Um, that still doesn't stop people from uh, going deeper and deeper down that stupid rabbit hole where they try to just stimulate your imagination and your fantasy. And I, in my opinion, the, the weirdest example of that happened just a couple of days ago when uh, you all will, will have seen that when a... Um, cargo ship damaged the a bridge in Baltimore, the United States. And it was totally clear to me. I, I was anticipating that within a couple of minutes, somebody would blame that to a cyber physical attack. Certainly it did happen. And the most moronic take that I have found on this uh, is on LinkedIn. I want to share it here with you. So as you can see, this is something that I have reposted because in my opinion, it's emblematic of the, the state of OT security discussions, especially on LinkedIn and other social media. So here, here we have a guy called Mandy Kupfer um, with the headline breaking, breaking news, uh, uh, bridge collapse in Baltimore. Could it be a cyber attack? What, what is breaking about that? So you, you're speculating if that it could be a cyber attack. What's breaking about that? Um, so the collapse raises questions about the safety of our critical infrastructure and the potential vulnerabilities to cyber attacks. I don't see the connection. Um, you have to, in order to appreciate the full bullshit of this post you have to scroll it down and say well this guy even went uh, to creating an artificial intelligence generated image that mimics um, this accident and uh, it also has a couple of uh, visualizations computer visualizations in the background suggesting something cyber-ish <laughs> I, I, I imagine that that is what it's supposed to mean total BS total FUD, FUD as at its best. Um, so ensuring its safety of the critical infrastructure and of that Francis Scott key bridge in ensuring the safety of that bridge goes beyond physical maintenance. It requires vigilance in the cyber realm as well. Okay, just it, for me, it's, it's peak bullshit, peak nonsense. Um, but this is the state of affairs in OT security, unfortunately. Uh, and my take on it is we have to, we, we are getting exposed to this bullshit because there are so few actual documented cyber physical incidents on the record, documented with forensic evidence, with um, the whole story, with credible sources, not just to, uh, according to anonymous sources. You remember that nonsense about the alleged uh, German steel mill incident. There are no zero named sources for this, but still 
People use it in their, their silly presentations when they try to, to pitch OT security solutions. So let's get to the bottom line here. Uh, Dale Peterson, in, in, as far as I understand him, draws a very much different conclusion from the state of affairs than I do. So Dale points more to, well, let, let's focus on our successes and the, the, the success that we uh, have so few actual cyber-physical accidents on, or incidents on the record. I, I would agree, but I have a different take. Um, in my opinion... If we just accept that as a fact, there are very, very, extremely few actual successful cyber physical attacks on the record. In my opinion, that tells me, um, well, then probably it isn't a very wise idea to heavily invest in detection. And let me get uh, this very clear. So some people accuse me for dismissing the cyber physical risk. That's nonsense, guys. I'm in the OT security industry now for more, almost 30 years. I'm, I'm one of the founders of this field and I'm still in that field. I'm, 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 I'm happy with that, right? I, I'm, I still think it's a very important um, field that we uh, must, uh, where we must achieve better progress than we did in the past. So again, this this state of affairs tells me that um, we are completely over invested in detection technology. Because if the hackers are too lazy to strike, then you won't find a lot of real world attacks in those network bits and bytes that you investigate uh, or in all your alarms that your seam sends you. Uh, so that state of affairs would suggest to me that it would be much wiser to invest in protection, um, such as in network segregation and all the, the other strategies that we um, actually master very well. And, you know, if, if you have followed my work, um, that... In my opinion, and, and as I uh, argument, as, as I argue, excuse me, the, um, in those fields, it is much easier to actually achieve progress. In detection, you cannot achieve progress. The only progress, in my opinion, would be to lower the number of false positive alerts, but that will still leave you with almost 100% of false positive alerts. So you could probably reduce the absolute number, but not the relative number, as long as the hackers don't strike. And um, so I would argue um, just place much more emphasis on protection and also to, on incident response rather than being obsessed with the threats and with threat detection. Thank you very much for your attention.